What's up, I'm Brian Tong and welcome to the Apple Vibe for all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. The iPad 2 is now on sale. I can hear you all the way from here squealing like little girls in line. I'm on a plane and you'll be getting yours before I do, but we have plenty of news plus a detailed look at Mac OS X line for all of you and it's pretty. Now for iPad 2 users unwrapping their shiny new toy, this is the thinnest tablet we've seen, but is it the fastest? CNET was able to run SunSpider JavaScript benchmarks comparing the iPad 2 to an original iPad running iOS 4.3 and found the newest iPad runs only one and a half times as fast and that many of the speed improvements for the original come with optimization from the latest iOS. Now we know dual core processors will definitely be able to handle tasks more efficiently. There's more to the product's performance than just raw power, but original iPad owners won't have to feel like they're really left too far behind. Now there's also new evidence in iOS 4.3 that indicates the next gen iPhone 5 will be using a dual core processor and it will be the same A5 processor used in the iPad 2. Now I'm glad someone else took the time to sort through all this code, but the evidence was found in the kernel file for a device codenamed N94AP, which is believed to be the iPhone 5. And uh, they better bring back those multitasking gestures that were in the developer's build because why take them away? That's a bad apple. Ow! All right, but could this be what the iPhone 5 might look like? A report from Mac Otakura's Chinese sources say Apple will be moving back to an all aluminum instead of glass casing back because of scratching and cracking issues that we've talked about before. Now that the iPad 2 is here, you guys can expect to see one of these new iPhone 5 images each week until June or July. All right, enough about mobile devices. So many of you write me and say, show me more about the Mac platform. Well, you're gonna get it with an inside peek of line with our favorite Asian scum. Hey guys, Brian Tong here with CNET.com and we're gonna show you some of the newest bells and whistles in the developer version of Mac OS X Lion in action, which is expected to come out sometime later this summer. Plus, we're gonna also show you a lot of hidden gems that you just haven't seen. So let's start off with a few of the sexy ones. First up is Launchpad, which gives you instant access to your app's iOS style. You can change to the Launchpad view by clicking on the icon on the dock. You can drag apps on top of each other to create folders just like in iOS, and you can move apps around the way that you want. Now there's also a lot more multi-touch support in Lion, so you can pinch with four fingers to bring up the Launchpad display and then spread them out to return to the desktop. Now this can be very fun and also very time consuming. Mission Control is another new feature that allows you to look at everything that is running on your Mac. Just swipe upwards with three or four fingers. You can see your desktop, all windows from your multiple apps grouped together, full screen apps and spaces. It's basically like expose on steroids, but it's definitely one of my favorite features so far. Now we mentioned full screen apps and there are a few built into Mac OS X Lion like Mail, the Calendar app and Safari. You can swipe back to your desktop or to other full screen apps using three fingers, but the full screen experience is a nice option and if you don't like it, just drag your mouse to the top right hand corner and click. Now let's transition into some of the new features in the Finder. Finder windows are now rounded on every corner and you can resize the window by clicking and dragging on any of the four corners. You'll also have a much smarter search in the Finder. We all know Spotlight is very good for finding files or words in a file, but if you know the type of file you're looking for, type in a file name like AIFF, then you can select to isolate the search by that specific kind of file, and then type in the name of the file you want to find. Another addition is viewing options in the Finder. Now I can still use the icon, list view, columns view, or cover flow view, but now I can view my files based on their type. So if I select all of my files in the revamped source list, I have the option to view them by kind, and you'll see text, image, and movie files separated, or by size as well. Now, if you're in your applications, you can view by application category, and it breaks them down into internet, productivity, and many others. Also in the Finder, AirDrop is a new feature in line that makes it easy to find computers on your local network and drag and drop files over to them. You'll find this in the left-hand source list column. Now, Dashboard has also become its own space, so if you swipe to the right with all three fingers, all your widgets are there, and you won't have a confusing backdrop of your computer. All right, let's jump into some specific apps. Now, we've shown you multi-touch gestures already, but Safari also gets a few new line tricks. If you tap the trackpad with two fingers, you'll be able to zoom into specific text. You can also pinch the zoom into an area of a web page, and if you swipe back, left, or right with two fingers, you'll see a new animation that reveals the previous web pages that you've looked at. 
Mail has also been completely revamped with a cleaner look and feel. It now threads your email just like on iOS devices, Apple calls it conversations, and related emails show up on a streamlined feed on the right hand side. You also can click on the number displayed to show the entire list of emails, their dates, and then directly jump into that email in the conversation. Now inside of an email, data detectors allow you to preview links without leaving the app, and you'll see new animations throughout the OS like this one when you reply to an email. Cool. Now in the email preferences, if new view isn't really your cup of tea, you have the option to go back to the classic mail layout and another kind of fun feature is the ability to show a contact's photo in the message list. Touching, I know. And let's show off one more feature called versions. When you're working on a document, go to the file menu to save as version. Lion has the ability to auto save changes to your files so from then on you can click on the top right hand corner of your document and it will allow you to browse all the different versions of the file in a time machine like view. Then you can restore the file if there's a previous version that you wanted and voila, it's like magic. All right, I know that was a lot of eye candy and information. There are plenty of more things we could show you, but that's an overview of some of the cool new features we can expect to see in Mac OS X Lion coming out this summer. Back to you, Tiger. Oh, you ain't lying. All right, let's check out some more stories, shall we? The Big A finally might be taking Apple TV a little more seriously to get more content partners on board. Apple TV's latest software update now supports Dolby Digital 5.1 surround sound for Netflix, AirPlay support from third-party apps, and best of all, it gives you access to MLB TV and NBA League Pass. Perfect job! Oh, that was so nasty, but oh my goodness. Like, if you were Flying Dragon and I was like a little boy, I would totally take a ride to a magical place in the sky. I'm done. Now, more amazing flying mythical creatures. Concord Securities analysts say the white iPhone 4, yes that thing, will be in production this month and ship by April. Apple has made changes to the film material to solve the lamination problem and uh, I'll believe it when I see it. Now on to some quick bites. Safari 5.04 was released by Apple with some new improvements and security patches, but tell that to French security researchers at the CanSec West conference who hacked a Mac in five seconds through security flaws in that Safari. I would like to buy a Indaga. Now iMovie and GarageBand for the iPad are available now for $4.99 a pop, so you iPad users can get your creative juices flowing. Probably shouldn't say juices on the show, unless it's apple juice. Mmm. And a much needed improvement comes to iOS 4.3, where users will have to re-enter their iTunes password in order to make in-app purchases, even if they just entered it in to download the app. Now this will hopefully prevent terrible things from happening like, you know, an eight-year-old girl racking up $1,400 in purchases of Smurf berries for the Smurf Village game. That, that's the same game that my grown man younger brother plays during his free time. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Send your emails to the Applebyte at CNET.com. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next week for another bite of the Apple.